Welcome back to Cryptech Mining. Today, guys, we're working on this RTX 3090. We're going to be doing the thermal pads and thermal paste. So this card, I want to get the longevity out of it. And uh, currently, it's sitting at a core temperature of 53.2. And the memory junction temperature is sitting at 106 degrees. I want to try and get that to below 100 if we can. And that's the goal of this. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we're currently running at 122 mega hashes at 351 watts of power. That's at 100%. Um, and obviously the memory temp still sitting at 106 there and the fans at 92%. So guys, um, the temperature in here at the moment is 20.7 degrees Celsius. So guys, obviously that's obviously going to fluctuate during the time I'm doing this car. But let's get this over the bench, pull it apart, do the thermal pads and paste and bring it back over here for some testing. Okay guys, so obviously you're going to need your thermal pads. So I've got two packs here just in case. I need to do the pads on the back of the hot plate. I've got some scissors to help me cut this. Obviously a Stanley knife, just in case. You never know if it's going to come in handy. A Phillips screwdriver. That's all you should need to pull your GPU apart. Obviously, I just got an old toothbrush as well to help me clean this down. I've got a micrometer tool to just measure the thermal pads. And, of course, I've got my new thermal paste. So this is Thermal Grizzly. This is the best non-conductive paste that you can get for your GPU. I highly recommend it. I've used it on a couple of cards. It works really well. Anyways, I'll speed through the teardown, and we'll get straight into changing the thermal pads. Alright, so as you can see, this is where the thermal pads were sitting. They're all pretty sticky. These white ones here were not changing. Um, they seem to be got a little bit of grease on them. Um, yeah, right there. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, you might try and clean that up, but it's not a big worry. It's not a big worry. Um, I wonder if I can, as you've probably seen in the video, I was trying to move this cord. I can't, I can't move this cord. I think we're just going to leave it in there. We'll just have to work around leaving it on the... On the GPU. Nah, it's definitely not coming off. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't think I'll ever get this thing removed properly without damaging it. So, I think we're just going to leave it on there. Let's make sure it's back on there nice and snug. Oh, well, it's not much we can do. We'll just leave it on there and we'll work around it. Alright guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to check the thickness of this thermal pad. Obviously, I do, I do have 2 mil thermal pads here. I didn't look it up. I just kind of went with it. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that we do have the right thickness. Yeah, so that is 2 mil. So if you guys own an RTX 3090, the Gigabyte, you need your 2 mil, two mil pads for this. Okay, so I'm just going to speed through this next part. I'm going to clean the card up, get it ready so we can put the new pads on and do thermal paste. Alright guys, as you can probably see here, these pads are just ripping and they're leaving so much residue on this heatsink. Just look at that, it's it's just crumbling. I mean, the heat pads get to this stage eventually, but I've only had this card for maybe a couple of months, so these are pretty bad quality, so it's just tearing. I mean, it really shouldn't be tearing at all, it should still kind of stay intact. But that's okay, because we're changing them anyways. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I, now I have all this other residue on here. I'll have to get all this off first, because you want to make sure that you have a nice, clear surface for your card. So having that clean surface means that when we put the new pads on there, it's going to come up, and it's going to have a good connection between the memory modules and the heatsink. 
And that's our main goal here is to try and drop those memory temperatures. Okay, so might just uh, polish this up a little bit as well. Make sure we have nothing left over. There we go. It's looking much better now. You can also see on there, I don't know if you guys can see it from uh, the, the top view here, but there's little markings where the um, where the thermal pads go. So that, that's pretty good. That might help me measuring them out as well. I'm pretty sure they're one and a half by five centimeters, just like on the 3080. But I am, but this cord is just getting in the way. Oh, well, it's unfortunate, but we'll have to keep working around it because I don't want to um, obviously break anything at the moment. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut up the thermal pads. We'll get them to the correct size. We'll get them on the heat sink, and then we'll concentrate on doing the thermal paste. All right, guys. Right, so the thermal pads are now on the heatsink. So now we're going to be doing the thermal paste for the GPU processor. So this is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. So this has a very good heat transfer rate, non-conductive. It's probably the best one you can get. This cost me $170 Australian. So guys, as you can see, it's, it's a dark color. It is a bit thick to apply. I do apply it with a spatula. If you guys have your own way of doing things, uh, let me know in the comments below. But as you can see, this stuff is really thick, um, but it, it it doesn't need a cure, and it works instantly. So this is the, one of the best ones we can get. All right, guys, so I'm going to speed the video up just while I'm applying this, um, and then we can get ready to get the card back together. All right, so as you can see, we have full coverage now. This is the way I like to do these processes. I mean, obviously, if it's a CPU in your computer, yeah, you can just put it, you know, you can do your old traditional methods. But obviously, for this, obviously, I want to make sure we have full coverage and good contact with that heatsink because obviously, this runs pretty hot. All right, guys, so now we're going to put the card back together, um, and then we can take it over to the bench for testing to see how much we have saved on the core temperature and the memory temperature. So obviously, the memory temperature is my main one, but obviously, this cryonaut paste works pretty well. So um, yeah, we'll take a look and see how much we can save on there too. Alright, so the car's back together. Um, guys, you're probably wondering why I didn't do the uh, thermal pads on the back plate. I don't know if you can see that. Um, under the back plate there, there's actually thermal pads already on this card. So this card already comes with thermal pads on the back plate. So I'm not going to do them now. I'm going to leave them on there. And, um, you know, we'll see how much we're saving on the temperature anyways. So we'll get the card back over. We'll get it plugged in. And... Um, Hopefully, we, hopefully, I'm hoping that we can get this thing below 100 degrees Celsius on the memory junction. Uh, that's, that's my main concern there. So we'll get the bad boy back down here. I'll get it plugged in, get the computer on, and we'll move forward from there and give this card a quick test. Okay, guys, so it's currently 19.2 degrees Celsius in here, so it's about 1.5 degrees lower than what it was earlier. Now, as you can see here, the card's fans aren't spinning. Um... That's because it's on silent mode. Let me just scroll down here to the actual card before we start. That's 1050 Ti. Right, there we go. RTX 3090. Okay, guys. So I've also got the same settings here. So we've got plus 1200. Core clock is at zero. Uh, you know, normal. And we've got a power limit of 100%. 
And as you can see here, the memory junction at idle is at 30 degrees Celsius and the core temp is at 21 and a half. So I'm interested to see how much we have made this drop by. All right, guys, so let's get MB miner open and we'll start taking a look to see where our temperatures are going to start going. All right, guys, so anyways... Just while we're waiting for this to start warming up, um, don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. It helps me out, and I appreciate all the help. All right, come on. Any second now. All right, so it's not too bad at the moment. So obviously, we have 122 mega hashes. we got a power wattage of 332 watts. That's a little bit lower than originally. Um, and as you can see here, it's just loading up now. So I'm going to put this camera out here. I'm just going to record the temperatures and we'll watch how it goes over the next five minutes and see what kind of temperatures we're looking at. Guys, what can I say? I'm more than happy with those results. Obviously, we're sitting at about 92 to 94 memory temperature, and the core temp has dropped about 10 degrees as well. So we have saved a lot of temperature coming out of this car, which means we're going to get more longevity out of it as well, which I'm more than excited about. Anyways, I, I am now going to get this card back into my personal computer, get it mining again, and do that. So guys, thank you for watching. Peace out, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.